Ooh, elvish wine. You feel sober again. Well, that elvish wine is not very strong, is it? <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton. I'm your humble narrator. Welcome to Adam, Ancient Domains of Mystery, an absolutely delicious roguelike uh, fantasy game. And I can't load a game because all my characters have died. So we're going to start up a new game. It's going to be quite nice. You'll see that this game has a lot of options. Um, unfortunately, there are... There's no balancing in the game. So playing a wizard is much more difficult than playing something like a fighter. Uh, as it is in D&D, I suppose. If you're trying to solo, you definitely probably don't want to roll a wizard. So first you have to choose your star sign, similar to uh, Elder Scrolls or just about any other role-playing game. I'd say Elder Scrolls because... Uh, it is one of the most ubiquitous uh, titles. So we'll start out with Cup, because uh, less experience to level is always a nice thing. Get those levels out there quicker, and then plus two to learning is always helpful. Males a bit stronger, females a bit more agile, I will go male. Uh, we've also got plenty of races, Dark Elf, Drakeling, Dwarf, High Elf, Grey Elf, Gnome, Human, Hearthling, Mist Elf, Troll, Rattling, Orc. Um, I like the Gnomes, they have a... Uh, the pickpockets ability, but you can learn that relatively easy. All of the abilities can be learned somewhere in the game, um, and I know where to get the pickpocketing ability, so I won't worry about that quite yet. Um, you also start out with a different alignment depending on your race, so obviously orcs and trolls are evil, ratlings kind of neutral. Um, I rather like the ratlings and the dwarfs as well. So let's do dwarf, I suppose, because they make good fighters. A pretty good fighter. And then we've got uh, professions. Archer, Assassin, Barbarian, Bard, Beast Fighter, Chaos Knight, uh, Duelist, Druid, Elementalist, Healer, Fighter, Farmer, Merchant, Minecrafter, Monk, Priest, Paladin, Necromancer, Ranger, Thief, Weaponsmith, Wizard, or you can leave all that up to Fate. You can do Fate for uh, just about any of these classes. So really, really a, a wide range of customization in here. I'll go Fighter because it's nice and simple. And then uh, you'll go ahead and assign your points and such, which is kind of nice because in D&D you just roll for it and you kind of hope for a good roll. But uh, here we get to add a little bit. So I've got uh, quite a few points to use. I can gain an extra talent if my uh, final stat tally is divisible by 7. So that is what I'm going to try and do, but um, it's a little bit difficult. As you may see, um, yeah, I generally am not able to do it, but we'll definitely try. A little more dexterity, maybe? That's not gonna work. Toughness? That's not gonna work. Hmm, charisma? Yes, there we go. Perfectly done. So, we've got a 13 in appearance, 12 in charisma, 13 in toughness, 12 in dexterity, 14 in strength. Pretty well balanced. Uh, a pretty strong dwarf, and also a pretty sexy dwarf, apparently. So, let's go ahead and stop this thing up. You're born a male dwarf. You have brown hair, green eyes, and a tan complexion. Your parents are traveling adventurers. They're doing moderately well, but they're talented enough to survive. As a child, your parents cared a lot for you. Despite all circumstances, you enjoyed a happy and fine childhood. In your youth, you worked a lot to become rich and famous later. Consequently, you rarely had enough time to play with other kids of your age. As a young adult, you had to do a lot of work to finance your apprenticeship. You're often tired and exhausted, but all this forgotten when you finally achieved your goal. At the age of 62, you ended your apprenticeship and are now a fully learned fighter. Uh, this doesn't really have so much effect on anything. It uh, does display your age, which changes depending on uh, how long the race lives. So Mist Elves uh, spend hundreds of years in an apprenticeship. Ratlings will only spend about like 14 to 16 years because their lives are much shorter. Same with humans for that matter. So we'll start it up. Get to play after I choose my talents. Um, I'm going to pick Hardy and let's do a little more to strength. Hardy and Strong. So we'll name him uh, Strong Bad. There we go. That looks like a dwarvish name, doesn't it? Strong Bad. Okay. Cool. For 6,000 worlds, the world of Arcadia was a serene world unmolested by the forces of chaos. But now the sinister forces of evil and darkness have opened a gateway somewhere deep within the mountains of the Dracolor chain. 
Terrors from unknown dimensions flood the world of Ancardia and spread havoc, wreak havoc spreading corruption even faster. It's now up to you to explore the Dracular chain, meet its inhabitants, find the source of chaos, and defeat it. Or maybe even join forces with it to conquer the world. Ooh! But I don't think my dwarf is going to do that. I don't think we're even going to get close, honestly. This is a, a really hard game, um, as you shall soon see. So I feel slightly exhausted today. Which ain't good. I start out with less his hit points, but uh, that's just fine. So, uh, you can move in eight directions, I believe it is. Yeah. So, the diagonal movement is really, really important to get used to. Um, and then there's also a lot of uh, hotkeys and things like that. So, you can uh, use weight with uh, W. W5 is extended weight. Underscore is prey. Uh, L to read things, Z to uh, use your wands or whatever if you have them. So it's gonna be much simpler as a fighter, thank goodness. Um, and that's usually why I play this class. Although the wizards are fun, um, the fighter's definitely an easier thing to play. So as I move through the dungeon, I'll obviously be removing the fog of war just a little bit. There's a light crossbow sitting here. You can use P to pick that up and. Um, yeah, eventually I'll be burdened and stuff like that, but that won't be for quite some time because I am a, a super strong warrior, you know? Well, this rat doesn't seem to see me, so uh, we'll sneak up on him. Boom! Heh <laughs> heh. 34 gold pieces. Where you get that, Mr. Rat? I don't have the key to use on this door, so I'll go ahead and search for traps, and then I'll kick that shit open. And I got hit with uh, some flames, so my search traps definitely did not work. We'll have to uh, keep that in mind and as we level a little bit we can put some more points into uh, detect traps. And really if you're not a dwarf you have to learn the detect trap skill from somewhere else. There's some ugly clothes on the floor which I'm not gonna bother with. 50 stones, that's pretty heavy. And uh, we'll beat up some rats. Obviously quite a bit of missing is done. This is really uh, reminiscent of old school tabletop games. Alright, there we go. There's our first level after we kill that orc. Huzzah! So I'm gonna put some more into de detect traps. Um, 25 still not really high enough, but if I keep dumping points into it, it's uh, not going to give me as many points as I would like. So let's see, what else can we do? Swimming? Dwarfs are not good at swimming. Everybody knows that. Uh, we could do some first aid, that's going to be good for our fighteriness. And dodge, and... You know what, I will do detect traps a little more. See, it only gives me two points though. So probably not the best thing that I could have done, but... Oh well. Um, there's an orc corpse that is lying here. You gotta watch your hunger in this game. So, I can eat this corpse? No self-respecting dwarf would do that. Okay, so... Dwarves are not going to eat uh, orc corpses. Lots of things have uh, different effects, so um, dark elves and things like that are able to eat spiders. Uh, let's kick this door. It's booby-trapped, of course. God damn it. <laughs> let's try and search for traps again. Come on, open it up. Alright, there we go. A heap of wooden sticks is lying here. I think we can eat bats. Maybe that'll leave a, a nice corpse for me. So let's see what we have here. A leather cloak and a large bat corpse. Um, I'll take the leather cloak and uh, the bat corpse for that matter. And let's eat that bat corpse and see what happens. Tastes like chicken. So that's not bad. Some corpses, like I said, will poison you. Don't eat spiders unless you're a dark elf. Even uh, spider bread and some foods that you can find around are not good for some adventures. So. Knowledge does play a, a big part of this game, much like it does in D&D, for that matter. So, let's see, we got a jackal corpse here, eat that. This meat tasted very dull. Well, that's fine. Beat up this warhound, or rabid dog, as the case may be. And another orc down, advance to level 3. This first dungeon, not too hard. We can handle this. So, I'll uh, up my dodge just a little bit. Athletics, detect traps. And uh, I guess that's it for now. Oh, but I also get a talent. Ooh. Very hardy. Quick. 
Uh, speed is pretty important in this game, especially if you're trying to run away from stuff. Because uh, you might get two turns for their one turn, which means you can get uh, one space away from the enemy and then they can't hit you. Which is obviously uh, pretty important if you're trying to, to flee from stuff. So I'll put a point into speed. Here's my speed value, which is only 97. Anything over 100 is good. Anything under 100, obviously uh, 100 is the average. So I'd like to be over 100, but that's, that's not how it is at the moment. Which is just fine. Um, we'll continue on. And you can see that I am uh, satiated. Oh, and here's uh, an altar of black obsidian. So I might be able to pray or sacrifice on this altar, but I'm not quite sure what my alignment is. Um, my my warrior's not going to be very pious. Pious? That's what it is. Um, sometimes, you know, you, you really need to uh, call on your god or something like that, and they'll give you a full heal, cure you from blindness or poison. There's lots of good stuff that can happen, but um, unless you're making a lot of sacrifices, you can only do it once or twice per game. So I try and make it count and just not worry too much about the altars. And as a warrior, you generally don't need to so much. Um, the warrior is a pretty self-sufficient class, obviously. And we'll beat up some more little baddies. A scroll named Kapow. Labeled Kapow. Okay, I'll take this. And we can try it on uh, something. Oh god. Here's a, a room full of baddies. So I'll get back here and try and... Let's see. I don't have any spells I can cast. I don't have any wands or items. Let's do... Uh, check literacy. You're somewhat literate. Well, I want to I wanna read my, my scroll. How about that? Can I do that? Hmm. <laughs> I seem to have forgotten how to do it. <sighs> well, uh, that's fine. We're probably not going to need the scroll, to be completely honest. See, I'm just uh, bashing some dudes up. Level 4. What, what? Dodge apparently is maxed out at the moment. Find weakness will help me uh, get some criticals, so I'll dump into that. A little bit more first aid couldn't hurt. Uh, detect traps I can't boost anymore. So let's do... We should do archery. That might be good for uh, picking some stuff off before it gets into my face. And then we've got... Hmm, literacy? Literacy seems like a good thing. Who doesn't want to be literate? So, there we go. A couple uh, free points that I can dump in there. And obviously it shows in the bottom um, what I'm doing to the enemies or what they're doing to me. Touching the gelatinous cube has paralyzed me. So now the, uh, the Rattling Thief. Hmm. Rattling Thief chuckles with hateful glee as the God of Thieves immediately takes his share. Whoa, my purse feels lighter, so it did steal a little bit of gold from me. But I'm going to get that back from killing it. No worries there. My Axe's skill has improved, so I shouldn't be missing as much. Let's get some uh, dodge and detect traps up in here. A little more find weakness. And we are good. Just keep beating the, beating the baddies. And obviously if you're a wizard, one of these rooms could possibly mean your doom. But as a warrior, you're able to just back up a little bit and, uh, yeah, don't have to worry too much. Like I said, the, the classes aren't extremely balanced in this game. Uh, you will definitely have a, a harder time with some classes than with others. Beast Fighter is probably one of my favorites because then you don't even need to worry about weapons. But, uh... Necromancers and wizards and stuff, it's, it's a little bit hard to get a hang on. Uh, but they do have a wiki for this game, so I do find that quite helpful from time to time. Eat that rat corpse, and I vomit. So, probably don't eat any more rat corpses. Luckily it didn't poison me or anything like that. But, uh, that was not good. Oh god, snakes from the pit. This is gonna be bad. Okay, we, we fell in a hole. Oh no. Oh boy. I'm really hoping to not die here. I could uh, also pray for a bit of intervention from my deity. Oh, I don't think I'm poisoned, so good. If I am poisoned, it would show up right under satiated in the upper left there. Just a little more gold for me. Ooh. Oh no, zombies. 
Always with the zombies. Luckily this rattling's not trying to uh, shoot me. Maybe he doesn't have any arrows. He didn't drop any arrows. So let's continue on our way. Ooh, scale mail. Nice. So now we can uh, go to my character sheet. There we go, inventory. And uh, we've got chain mail there. Let us try and remove the chain mail. Oh, it takes multiple turns to remove it. My goodness. Forget it, forget it. I'll wait just a minute. I am going to pray, as a matter of fact. Pray to Mordwin. Healed by a golden light surrounding me. Ha ha! And a level. Uh, you don't recover health through levels, which is, I guess, makes sense. But uh, a lot of games will have mercy for on you when you're uh, leveling up. Not Adom, though. It's a very hard game. So, 7% PV bonus from some items. Huzzah! We'll go ahead and get uh, Detect Traps and Dodge again, because that shit is awesome. A little bit more literacy couldn't hurt either. Uh, let's go very quick. So now I'm at that 100 speed, even with my gigantic uh, male armor. And I got a little bit of food. Let's let's try this chain mail first. There we go. So let's see how the scale mail compares. Hmm, it's a little bit better. It doesn't decrease things as much. Hmm, but it also doesn't add as much. I think I'm gonna stick with the scale mail, just because. Uh, yeah, I don't want my my hit value to drop. Based on, based on stupid heavy armor, whatevers. I'm doing just fine. We're not fighting anything too terrible quite yet. Poison is probably one of the things you have to worry about the most in this game. And I made it through the uh, the pit vipers with relative ease. I, it did scare the shit out of me, but it wasn't too bad. So it seems this door is not uh, trapped. Of course it is. Hidden runes on the door suddenly explode. Equipped gauntlets are torn apart. Fuck. Every time. My search traps is just terrible. Uh, as you can see, they don't pull any punches as far as the checks go in this game. And there we go. A little bit of gold for the dates and do. Um, yeah. But your rolls are definitely your rolls in this game. Um... There's not much mercy to be had, if you want me to be completely honest. That is one of the things I like about the game. That is, uh, for surely. And I think this is the bottom of the dungeon, so let's go ahead and head back up top. And, uh, maybe we could find some, some more interesting goodies, some more baddies to beat up. Let me eat that goblin corpse. This meal does not sit well with you. Well, it's better than nothing. That's what I say. Food is food! Isn't it? Sometimes you're in a dungeon and, and you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. Eat a bat corpse. Eat a rat corpse. Rat shit, bat shit, dirty old twat. Sixty-nine assholes tied in a knot. <laughs> Thank you, George Carlin. A hero among men. So uh, they're gonna try and shoot me with some stuff. I back up a little bit just to uh, give me some room. Several uh, several items lying here. We got some rocks. So I'll add that to my, my sling, and then I can at least uh, shoot a little bit of stuff. As long as I'm not walking too fast through the dungeon, which that tends to happen just a little bit. Kobold cult, corpse and a short bow. I don't think I want to eat a kobold corpse. That can't possibly be good. Dirty creatures, those kobolds. But I will eat this bat corpse. Tastes like chicken. It's delicious. I love it. So there, our first dungeon is completed. Um, here's our first town, Torinio, a tiny hamlet. And uh, yeah, I've got quests on queue apparently. Talk to at least three important people. Um, you can see who's important because they will have a little uh, star above their head. So let's see, see the chat. Feel free to look around. Tell me if you notice any thieves. I could try and thief some of these rations here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not a bad guy. I'm just a warrior, trying to make his way in the world. So, obviously you can wander around the town to get rid of the fog of war, or you can just hit zero and your character will auto-explore everything. 
So that's generally what I like to do because time's not necessarily a factor at the moment. Um, the only thing that's going to happen while you're in a town, uh, time-wise, is your hunger will start to get a little bit uh, more hefty. But I've got a few rations and things like that. You can also pick up those corpses that are on the floor. Take them with you um, if you need a little snack for later. I do see a couple of characters that I could talk to over there to the left, so perhaps we will go and do that. And now my character says he's done exploring, so wonderful, wonderful job. Obviously, I do have a little bit of fog of war on my character, even in the town, but that is mostly because uh, my character has a really low perception. Wizards and things can see everything, but uh, not I. Not I. Let's talk to this druid. Recently, we've been plagued by the attacks of an evil sorcerer. He was once the brother of my order, but now has fallen to the dark powers. He's a black druid, corrupting the powers of nature and twisting them to suit his darker needs. His name is Keithrax. Find him and defeat him. He set up his headquarters in the sinister cave to the southeast. If ye return with success, I'll reward thee. May fate smile upon both of us, brethren. All right, where's that other fella? There's one. The village elder. Life is hard these days. Monsters, wars, and dangers abound. Ain't that the truth? There's two more important people. Me damn wife left me broke. My heart and me life. Damn hag. But at least my quest is complete. The west is the source of this mess. Burp. Dark caves hide something messy, you know? I get a quest from a drunkard? I don't, I don't think I'm gonna put too much stock in that. So let's talk to uh, this this baby water dragon. Bobby? Not your mommy. Tell me some more. Hast ye seen my mommy? Indeed not. Where is your mommy? Ye know where me mommy is? Apparently he doesn't even have a direction for me to go and explore. So, not gonna bother with that shit. Alright. Um, I think there's also a little girl in this town that tells me to go find her lost dog. And that is uh, one quest that I have completed before. But I don't see the little girl at the moment. So, I guess we'll have to uh, just leave the village. Leave the village, continue on. And there are many mountains here, but I need special equipment in order to climb them. And here is a, a very deadly dungeon. Obviously, you can see from the, the skull. And here uh, are some random encounters. So I have the option to either evade or fight. This is based on a sneak check. My sneak is not very good. Um, but yeah, I'm not worried about a pack of wild dogs anyways. Even if a warrior gets surrounded, he's not uh, off put by that. Because he is a warrior, you see? Just fight them one at a time. Take them all down. Get that delicious experience. Yes. And not even a hit taken. So, very nice. I'm going to uh, take this dog corpse with me. Oh no, I'm not satiated anymore. We'll eat it right here. The meat was very tough. Maybe you should cook it before eating it. Yes, of course. Cook it. Indeed. Why didn't I think of that? Hobgoblin patrol, let's try and evade it. And we fail. You don't get away. That's fine. I wanted to fight them anyways. They're definitely stronger than the dogs. But, uh... Not so much stronger, as you can see. I beat their leader down. And, uh, the rest of them soon follow. Here's a leather cloak. Maybe I could wear this, uh... In my cloak slot. I was gonna say around my neck, but that's not the case at all. I do need some new gauntlets as well. Hmm. Why did I break them? Let's equip a uh, sling in my missile slot as well. Should have thought of that a little earlier. We'll get out of this area. Kind of just uh, exploring. I could try and swim over the river, but that doesn't seem like a great idea because dwarfs... Dwarfs are not good at swim. Everybody knows that. And here... I take a uh, 1 HP of damage from the Hobgoblins. Oh, there's a little more. Oh, they're, they're swinging on me. They might even get me. Probably not, though. It's great to be a warrior. <laughs> it makes things so simple. Uh, maybe one day I'll, I'll master wizardry and try that out. Oh, Lawan, 
Lawinofell. Lawinofell, an outlaw settlement. All right, we'll we'll have a visit. You enter a derelict and muddy settlement populated by equally derelict and muddy persons. Well, I think uh, if you're if you're good, some people try and fight you here. Obviously, that assassin wanted to fight, so I give it to him. And here's a, a shop with some some wares besides just the food that I was able to find in the other settlement. Unfortunately, with only uh, 269 gold, I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, buy anything. The prices are quite steep, you see. I can't even buy a ration. Yeah, everything is at least a uh, 1,000 gold here. I could buy a hat. Ooh, a hat! I'm not going to do that. Thank you for uh, exhibiting your, your wares. I don't think I'll, I'll find anything here that I can make any use of. Let's open this door here. I know about this fella. Yurgius, the master thief, whispers, have a nice day, sirrah. Oh, he doesn't want to talk to me. Do I already know pickpockets? Hmm. Perhaps so. But that is the guy that teaches you how to uh, pick pockets if you don't already know it. So uh, this is generally one of the first places I'd like to stop by. There's also uh, a guy here that gives you a quest to slay the sheriff in Torino. And this outlaw just is ignoring me as I'm swinging at him, so it's probably not good. I missed twice. He might kick my ass. Let's just, let's just be on our way. Let's be on our way, sirs. And uh, here's a shadowy dungeon that might be fun to enter. And a crumbling dungeon. I'll try the crumbling dungeon. You sense death looming. Your sixth sense tells you to leave quickly. Okay. You generally want to listen to your sixth sense. That is uh, basically the game designer telling you, Hey, you're not level enough to be here. So now we've got a large jackal pack. I'll try and evade it, but of course I fail. And there is a lot of, uh, a lot of jackals around. Luckily, I'm able to one-hit most of them. I advanced to level 7, so we'll get that dodge up just a little more, detect traps, find weakness. That is uh, the build we're going for, I do suppose. So, yeah, I've got a lot of health. We'll see if it can weather this, uh, this mess. And obviously I could do T to change my tactics. That's probably a good idea. You can go Berserk, uh... But yeah, that drops your, your DV and increases your 2 hit and 2 damage, but obviously that's probably not something that you want to do. You can also do defensive mode, uh, very defensive, coward, very aggressive, aggressive. Being aggressive is not necessarily a bad thing, but there are way too many enemies surrounding me right now for me to uh, want to try that too much. Luckily I'm able to uh, weather the jackals relatively well. So, a corpse is lying here. I'll pick that up. Viscous Potion. Hmm. can only wonder what that's going to do. We could do uh, a little drinky drink. Let's try it. Ooh, Elvish Wine. I feel sober again. Well, that Elvish Wine is not very strong, is it? <laughs> uh, we've got a bit of Heavy Boots, a Glockenspiel, and a couple of Jackal Corpses. So, I'm very heavy, er, heavily burdened now. I'm going to drop my chain armor. That should help. Uh, I'm not a bard, so I don't need the glockenspiel. Hmm. Scrolls. Scrolls, scrolls. I'm not going to drop my scrolls. I probably won't end up using them, but I don't want to drop them for some reason that uh, I'm not quite sure of yet. A rather boring cave entrance. Okay. Show me the rather boring cave. Goblin throws rocks at me. There's a small shield here. Is it any better than the shield that I have currently, is my question. So, left hands. Let's check out that B shield. It's exactly the same, I think. So, whatever. It be what it be. Durability? Um, is that a thing in this game? I'm not quite sure. It would, it would make sense to me, because this game is uh, extremely uh, fitting in like the Dungeons & Dragons pen and paper kind of thing. And durability is definitely a thing there, so this might be a dead end. Nope! 
A bit of searching reveals that there is much more to it. A cheap cloak? Well, guess what? I'm not wearing a cheap cloak. What would people think of me if I wore a cheap cloak? I don't have the appropriate key, so I kick this fucking door down. Goblin chieftain? Severely wounded, and then mangled heap. Wonderfully done. Uh, but there seems to be a lot more on this floor that I might explore. It's just a lucky guess going down that way first. Wow, this is a pretty cool thing. Let's look at this, uh, Lise Damon. Hostile, not injured. This is one of the things I like most about Adom, is that you can, uh, really inspect things. You see? Truly minor Damon, these infernal spirits are just a step above closets before being granted their existence not by some magic of this plane, but by a daemon lord requiring some minor power to be present in our, in our world. Their purpose here is unknown to any but the least daemon and its creator. They usually take a small humanoid form, but with oddly colored skin and misshapen features. They usually attack three times on average, cause nine points of damage, have an average speed of 106. So, very very fast. But that's okay, because I've got armor. Armor to spare, my friends! Yeah, he does, uh, hit me quite, quite quickly, but not quick enough. Sometimes the, uh, quickness will not overcome. Oh, look at that, female bugbear. Maybe I could try shooting. How's that? Yeah, attack it. Hey, you! You hear a thudding sound. You're out of ammunition. Well, let's try, uh, let's try that again. Slightly injured. Hooray! Moderately injured, and then boom! Ha ha! Listening skill increased for some reason. I'll take that. Orange potion. This liquid tastes like plain carrot juice. I just can't help myself with the potions. It's rather random uh, what the potions are, are able to do. But it's always fun to find out. So I don't have a tool here, which is what I need um, in order to get through this this little bitty bit. You can either light these torches or light a torch of your own and find your way through here. But unfortunately I don't have uh, any way to do so. So I'll just outline the room a little bit. And I did luckily find a door. Oh, this placer beast. That looks really cool too. Tell me about this. A low snarling draws your attention to a dark cat-like creature moving very quietly. Although you're sure the beast is still several feet away from you, the gleaming eyes suddenly close seem to be but inches away from your own, and the black tentacles close enough to your throat. This placer beasts have an average DV of 38, usually they attack two times, average speed of 93. So I should be able to beat this thing just based on speed alone. And yeah, I uh, knock that thing out with basically one hit, which is really, really nice. Um, not gonna bother with that bow or the kobold corpse. What is this thing? Werejackal? Werewolf. Oh, I think we fought something similar to this before. It was a little weaker, uh, but luckily he dropped some food, so that's gonna be nice for me. So, this is, uh, largely the game. There is not much random generation, which is something that, uh, I'm a little bit loath for, you know? Uh, I really would like to see a randomly generated world and things like this, but um, unfortunately that's not the case. I somehow got poisoned. God damn it. I shouldn't have scrolled so fast through there. But uh, it be what it be. A heap of six lumps of clay. Interesting. Maybe I can uh, get rid of my poisons if I eat some jackal corpses. Maybe an iron ration? Now I'm satiated. Is the bread in my stomach going to soak up this poison? <laughs> it doesn't seem that the poison is uh, destroying my health too much, so we'll continue on through the dungeon. It's quite a choice to make. This dungeon's very dusty. And there's a flesh golem here. That is uh, absolutely terrifying. Tell me more about this creature. Been assembled from various parts of a corpse, thick stitches hold its disparate limbs from it together. A pair of iron bolts jut out from its neck that serve no purpose at all, as far as you can tell. It utters a slow moan as it advances. Also, it's able to teleport. So hopefully, uh, it's not going to teleport too quickly. Oh my god. 
This is uh, going to be a close one. I'm going to pray. Pray to Mordwin. And I'm healed! Huzzah! So, hopefully, uh, my luck will hold out. Oh my god, it teleported me. Oh, it's, uh, a little spot on the floor that is able to teleport me. Or was I perhaps cursed? Was it some sort of curse? I'm now stuck in a room? I'm supposed to use these, uh, teleporters to get around, I do suppose. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not I'm not digging this too much. But here's uh this the path downward. Let's also take this tin wand. Maybe I'll find that helpful in some way. Hmm. Open this here door. Got a quarter staff. It's generally not good to fight these slimes, because they also might poison you. Luckily I'm able to uh take it down with just one one swing of my mighty axe. And my axe. Because, you know, I'm a dwarf. That's what dwarfs do. Jeez. This teleporting thing is, uh, really getting the best of me. There's a battle axe here. Let's see if that's better than what I have. I assume the wood shield is not any better than what I have. Oh, I currently have a battle axe. I could also dual wield, which might be kind of cool. But, uh, I'm not gonna bother with that just yet. Battle Axe plus zero, and 1d6 plus two. Mm, it's not great. It's not great, from what I can tell. Yeah, my other Battle Axe was better, so... That's plus two. So that's basically 1d6 plus four. Much better! Lucrata? I've never heard of a creature like this. I'll do a little, uh, a little reading about it. A monstrous beast of ugly appearance and vile temperament. Being the result of a hideous magical experiment, it combines the body of a stag, the head of a huge badger, and the tail of a lion. Its fur is spotty brown or black, and it is surrounded by a decaying smell. It has sickly yellow teeth and glowing red eyes. Average speed of 104. Hmm. Well, it's a little bit faster than me, but we're still able to take it down. Take it on down! And I wish I had, uh, something to get out of this cave. This is really, uh, screwing with me just a little bit. Here's some spider webs on the floor. And a key? The spider webs are, uh, not doing me any favors. I'm gonna get out of this cave. I don't want to play teleporty anymore. <laughs> we could, uh, go find our death somewhere. That would be fun. Female necromancer goes down in no time at all. Oh my goodness, there is a lot of stuff sitting here. So, let's take this heap of rocks, and that is it. <laughs> I guess I've killed some other creatures besides just that necromancer. And she seems to have conjured quite a few skeletons over here. Um, I've got two weapon combat as an option. That might be kind of fun. I'm going to dump all my points into it. 45, not, not too terrible. Uh, let's see about that other axe. Mmm, D. There we go. So now I've got two axes in my hand, as you can see. That is displayed, which is really, really nice. And I've got a potion of water, so that's obviously identified already for me. For my convenience. And I found an amber ring and a swordsman. Oh my, cut purse. Well... You mustn't take my gold pieces. I'm gonna eat his corpse. Large orc sneaks up on me. I felt uneasy after eating the cut purse. Probably because, you know, that's dirty meat. Dirty meat, bro! Let's, uh... find our way out of this cave. Yes, indeed. I needn't be here any longer. Alright. Back to the overworld. Ooh! An ambush by a pilgrimage of chaos monks. So, welcome to the party, bros. I'm gonna get wrecked so quick. Try praying one more time. Mortal, ye are a nuisance! Oh. I really needed it now, but it ain't gonna come. You feel corrupted. You die. Aww. Goodbye, strong bad. So, at the end, you get a... a little memoriam of what Strongbad accomplished in his short time on this earth. 
Dwarven fighter was killed by a Chaos Sister. Uh, you've got your point total, advance to level 8, survive for 5 days, that's not good. <laughs> Trained for 70 years and then died in 5 days. Good job, strong bad. Visited 9 places, uh, ended his adventuring life somewhere on a lone road, 152 monsters perished under his attack. He was not very pious, but asked for 3 divine interventions, lawfully aligned, slightly tainted by chaos, and then there's a list of all the uh, monsters that I was able to destroy. Ah, oh, well, it was a good time, as it always is with Adom, but there's obviously much more learning to do as, as these things tend to go. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed, friends. If this looks like a game that you would enjoy, I'd suggest going to pick it up. There's a link to the Steam page in my description. This game did start out as a text-based adventure and has had uh, a fresh coat of graphical paint put on it. And it is really, really nice if you enjoy uh, fantasy games, especially pen and paper games and uh, things of that sort. So do check it out. Uh, I really, really enjoy it, although it tends to hand me my ass more often than not. But that is fine. Uh, yeah, we can learn a little more. We'll do a little better next time. And if I'm ever, ever able to uh, complete this game, I would like to uh, do it as a series on the channel. But that is probably a long ways off, so I wouldn't hold my breath for that. Anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed. Uh, once again, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you enjoyed. You can even dislike if you didn't enjoy. We've also got uh, links to Discord, Twitter, and Patreon, as well as Facebook, Anook, a bunch of crazy stuff down in the description. If you want to hit me up on any of those, I am uh, relatively active. Uh, finally, I would like to say... Thank you so much for watching, friends. This has been Adom. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye bye. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye. See you again. Goodbye, goodbye. See you, my friends.